Hey guys, what's up? So many of you were requesting that sir, please explain procedure established by law versus the due process. So in this lesson, we'll talk about everything, uh, the difference between them, how it's evolved, and all that. So when we talk about due process clause, uh, which impressed our constitution maker, it is basically taken from America American doctrine. So the original text of the American Constitution did not have a due process clause. But then they were amended and the 5th and the 14th amendment provided that uh, government may not deprive any person of life, liberty or property without due process of law. And in the 19th century, American Supreme Court traced the doctrine to the Magna Carta. So you might be knowing about Magna Carta. So the American doctrine due process of law was widely perceived to favor the supremacy of courts and not the supremacy of the constitution. Now due process of law doctrine not only checks if there is a law to deprive the life and personal liberty of a person but also see if the law made is fair just and not arbitrary so this is again very very important concept and if supreme court finds that any law is not fair any law if it is not fair it will be declared in null and void then and there and this doctrine provides for more fair treatment of individual rights and it gives precedence over the constitution it also gives the judiciary to access the fundamental fairness justice uh, liberty of any legislation so basically if I want to summarize the so due process of law is the procedure established by law plus some discretion based on that the procedure should be fair and just and not arbitrary some inherent fairness should be there. So this is everything about due process. Now let us see why due process of law was dropped from the Indian draft constitution. So there is a reason behind it. So it was Justice Frankfurt who advised B. N. Rao to drop the due process clause from the draft constitution because it was considered undemocratic and it imposed an unfair burden on the judiciary. So Justice Frankfurter advised B. N. Rao. Okay, now why? So B. N. Rao was an Indian civil service officer. He was a leading member of the drafting committee. And uh, Ashok Desai, a senior advocate of the Supreme Court, said in an interview to an online general a few years ago that Frankfurter advised against it by because in his view due process would mean like different judges will take different opinion they, they'll take their own view of what was due and reasonable it will create a lot of chaos and since we were newly independent it would not be good for our democracy's health so the legal issue could then become subjective it can become political so it, they were afraid of that subjectiveness and becoming political and we thereafter adopted the more limited phrase which is called as the procedure established by law so the members of constituent assembly feared that the adoption of the American doctrine it would lead to a flood of litigation a lot of cases will be filed after the inauguration of the new constitution and we were not ready for that. Therefore the constituent assembly deleted the phrase due process of law from the draft text and substituted it with procedure established by law in article 21 until date article 21 reads and I will quote no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty except according to the procedure established by law. So what do you mean by procedure established by law? Let us see. So when we talk about procedure established by law, so it means it, it originated in the English court like many things in Indian constitution and it means that a law that is duly enacted by legislature or the concerned body is valid if it has followed the correct procedure. Now it has its origin in the English court and the parliament is basically supreme sovereign whatever you want to call it in the english system of unwritten constitution because there is no constitution so parliament is supreme and this doctrine confers limited powers in the hand of judiciary so do you realize the importance of a written constitution in our case constitution is supreme parliament is not in uk's case parliament is supreme constitution is not so the court applies the following test to verify whether the action of the state is valid or not first is whether there is any law that authorizes the state to take away the life or liberty of an individual. First point is this. Second is whether the legislature was competent to pass the law. Okay, so that is second thing. And third is whether the executive followed all the procedure established by law. So, if any one of the above are not fulfilled, the court will declare the action of the executive as illegal and will provide protection to the individual against arbitrary action of the executive. So, this is important. The court will not check 
whether the law itself was arbitrary and oppressive and even if it was so the court cannot declare it unconstitutional and void only on this ground so it is a very important so for example if parliament discriminate between two races and supreme court is like not finding it uh, like uh, voiding the constitution so they cannot declare it arbitrary and oppressive only on the ground of this part so the court cannot provide protection to the individual against the arbitrariness of the legislature they can enact whatever law they want and court cannot do anything about it so this doctrine is dependent on the good sense of the legislature assuming that the legislature is acting bona fide that is in good faith and the public opinion to correct any arbitrary action of the legislature so following this doctrine means that a person can be deprived of his life or personal liberty according to the procedure established by law so you can be killed also by state so the doctrine has a major flaw so because it does not seek whether the laws which are made by the parliament are fair or just and not arbitrary because the intent of the law making body cannot be questioned under this doctrine so if you strictly follow the procedure established by law it will compromise the life of the personal liberty of the individual personal freedom of the individual due to unjust laws for example parliament says that all the call of the citizens will be recorded so it is unjust right but if it if it makes the law and follows properly then supreme court may say that it is following the procedure established by law so because to avoid such situation supreme court stressed the importance of due process of law so here article 21 intended to provide only physical protection to the individual against any arbitrary action of executive and since it provided for procedure established by the law initially what happened was supreme court refused to accept that article included the doctrine of due process but now let us see the menka gandhi versus union of india case of 1978 it is a very important case passport case you might be knowing about it so i have explained it in a separate lesson so in menka gandhi versus union of india case in 1978 supreme court overruled its previous stance and it held that article 21 seeks to provide full liberty to the individual and inherently encloses the principles of natural justice supreme court held that procedure established by law within the meaning of article 21 must be right and just and fair and not arbitrary fanciful or oppressive so the court can look at the law from a wider perspective of inherent justness and goodness of the law based on principles like natural justice including audi ultram partum now what is this audi ultram partum audi ultram partum means you have to hear the other side as well so it means the accused has a right to be heard whoever you are victimizing he has a right to be heard as there cannot be a penal law in india which deprives someone the right to a fair trial before depriving him or her of life and liberty so thus the procedure established by law has acquired almost the same significance in india as the due process due process of law clause in america so in menka gandhi case it was held that the constitution mandates fair procedure when rights are deprived so let us see the last thing so there is a very th thin line between the two so from beginning in the 1970s an activist supreme court started incorporating the us constitutional doctrine of procedure due process and substantive due process in india and though article 21 formally provides that a person's life and personal liberty can be deprived so long as there is a merely a procedure established by law that is a validly enacted law the doctrine of procedural due process mandates that this procedural law must be fair just and reasonable and uh, the doctrine of substantive due process enables a court to question just not procedural laws but the substantive value choices of the legislative branch of the government as well like how they are making the laws all that thing parliament cannot make random laws so the although the court would repeatedly hold in subsequent cases that the american standard of due process did not apply to the indian constitution because that is much broader in scope in reality what court is doing they will apply nothing less than due process standards to administrative and legislative authority in its emphasis on fair just and reasonable procedure so in a sense you are having fair just and reasonable laws the supreme court still holds that substantive due process does not apply to india meaning that the intent of legislature behind making a law cannot be challenged in the court but procedural due process does apply but in practice something else is followed so i hope you have understood the difference now thank you for watching this have an awesome day